Hello, YouTube. Welcome back to another fun-filled and exciting episode of Easy Prepping. This is your own Uncle Carl throwing some advice at you that you have at least some form of providing yourself with light after the sun goes down. I'm going to cover several here today. I'm going to, uh, in fact, one I've got is not very thought of by most people, and yet very easy to have on hand. Doesn't take up much room. And I'm going to wait till then to cover that one, so you'll either have to watch the whole video or learn how to fast forward. The first method I want to show you is probably the one that uh, most people think of first when they think about having a light after dark, and that is flashlights. There is a wide variety of flashlights out there. In fact, I was just looking online. I did a Google or Amazon search, and I looked at price high to low. There's a flashlight out there that cost a thousand dollars. I don't own that one. Mine are a lot less expensive. For some of you older folk, the big square battery fits in these, and this one still works. I golly knows how long I've had that battery in that one. And here's one I showed on my video about uh, the tornado shelter that I have. They have two different types. It can either be a straight out flashlight or as a light the whole room. On the back we have a magnet just sticking up on the side of a metal shelf. Also a hook. I have quite a few of these sitting around in different places in the house. As far as inexpensive, just your cheap plastic, this one needs a new battery. Uh, these don't cost much and you can get them in packs of four, ten, that's in it cheap and you've got light. A little bit more expensive ones are the zoomable. This could go wide all the way down to a narrow beam. It can also do, let's see if I can get it to turn on. There we go. Strobe. Which, if you're out at night and you need help, you need to get attention, recommend the strobe. It can also do SOS. Three short, Three long, three short. Flashlight does that by itself. Also still zoomable. I went through my desk drawer here. I know I have a lot of different, uh, found three, just little handheld. I have a lot of flashlights around the house. That's, that's my point there. And then there's the type you strap around your head. This one I've had in this desk drawer, I don't know how long, it still works. I don't even know what kind of battery this thing takes, but at any rate, when you can strap around your head, this would be handy if you're trying to read a book. And the last one I want to show you is one of the more fancy ones that I have. In fact, I, could, I just ordered it, wrote on the side of the box, and stuck it on the shelf. LED solar camping light, it's the top, has LED charging. Also, can charge a phone. You could either charge this through the USB, or you could use the USB port to charge your phone. And it's either the beam type flashlight, or pulls apart to be a hanging lantern. And you can vary the, vary the amount of light by how far you open it. These are probably some of the most expensive I had, and I think a pack of two of them was $27. dollars You can find them on Amazon. Comes with the rechargeable batteries and the USB cables. But, like I said, I just put them straight on the shelf in the basement. The next method I want to cover is, well, candles. It's probably the second most obvious that people will think of. But if you're going to depend on candles, you need a way to light them. I mentioned a little bit ago, I was going through this desk drawer and found three, four flashlights. I also found a pack of lighters way in the back. I bet these have been in there, could be 15, 20 years. They're still full. And that reminds me of another way, thinking of fire, that if a fireplace could be a source of light, it's just uh, not very usable as light in the summertime. It does uh, cook you right out of the house. But as far as fire, I can light candles with, or light a fire with. I got... I think I bought a 50 pack of these years ago at Amazon, just little big lighters. And I keep them inside these airtight 
containers that were free since we bought them anyway, and they sit on a shelf in the basement. But you'll need a way of creating fire in order to light your candles. And now that we've looked at ways you could light your candle, let's cover the different types, sizes, styles. As I mentioned in a previous video, I have a pack of 100 tea lights. Little, they're the little candles that come in a little metal cup. And uh, they're supposed to burn up to eight hours. But as I said, even if uh, you only get five hours, that's 500 hours of a candle burning. And next we have what's typically called a tapered candle. I have hundreds of these. I get them at estate sales, yard sales. A customer that I had many years ago let me buy out of their employee store. And pallets of these that were returned, because somebody poked a pallet with a forklift or something, they let me shop in their store. It was 10 cents on the dollar. I have hundreds of these. These can are not only good as a candle, but the wax is flammable to the point that if you have a regular fireplace, I wouldn't recommend these on a wood-burning stove, but you could cut them into thirds or even quarters and set it in there on top of your wood pile and get your kindling going a little. These will greatly accelerate the uh, speed your fire gets going. And other candles I keep in stock. I look for the ones that are, well, a little bit bigger. You can uh, light and not have to worry about replacing it for quite a while. These I picked up at a estate sale. This I mentioned where I got big boxes of candles for 15, 20 bucks. And I found when I burned one of these that the wick burned faster than the wax. Uh, the wax kept putting out the wicks. I'm thinking maybe it's because of their age. This one's still wrapped in plastic, might do better. But what I did is I went out to Amazon and bought a bunch of six inch candle wick, new, cotton, long burning. And I figured with a drill, I could go down into the candle, insert my new wick, and I've got a whole lot of burn time. And if that one's not enough, there's this. But that's those aside. Look at that. 10 bucks just for that candle, and I got boxes of them for uh, 15 or 20. Anyway, a safer candle would be your glass enclosed ones. Also, these are a whole lot easier to put out. You just snap the lid back on, kills the flame. But a whole lot safer because they're encased in glass. Uh, this one is not a Yankee candle, so we didn't pay an arm and a leg for it. Also, uh, glass candles, another thought, the Dollar Tree has the ones that they're about this size, not, maybe not quite that tall, but almost figures around, and they're encased in glass. And Dollar Tree's gone up, they're now above 25, but that's a pretty good deal for a candle this size that has the safety of being encased in glass. And the last type of candle I'd like to cover for having light after the sun goes down is this uh, candelier put out by a company called UCO, nice hanging bracket, three nine-hour candles that, I don't know if you can see that, they have uh, like metal rings around them there that would keep them from burning differently. They keep them, I think, keep the burning steady so that you get your nine hours out of them. And another prepper that I saw do a video on this said this heated his bunker not to a point of being hot, but kept it bearable. And he's in Alaska in winter. Another thing about this one is I think you could put a pot, on, nothing real heavy, but a pot on top of here and be able to at least warm up water. I doubt if it'd get it boiling. And one thing I forgot to mention about using regular candles, especially ones like this, you want to put these on a paper plate or something because the wax is likely to drip down the side. And what I said about using wax candle to start a fire, you take your paper plate after it gets a lot of wax on it, you got a fire starter. One of my previous videos, I mentioned that I was on Guam, May of 76, when the island was devastated by a super typhoon. Well, it was a week or two after the typhoon before we were able to get word back to the states that we were okay. 
Uh, the Red Cross set that up, by the way. I still thank them for that. But part of my note back to the States was send my lanterns. I had purchased several railroad lanterns at a flea market that's held in Louisville, Kentucky every year, right around New Year's. And I had purchased several like this. And I guess because of all the relief effort headed to Guam, they got there quick. And my wife and I used a couple lanterns like this for light for weeks. I was able to get kerosene, I think, burned in them. But uh, yeah, it's a source of light after dark. Now, there are several different types of lanterns. There's that. And then there's the fancy glass ones that you see. These are the two primary types. Uh, some tips on each is that once you start with a type of oil, stick with that type of oil. From what I've read, if you switch, you'll get a lot more smoke than you do light. One other tip is that these get hot. You've been burning this glass one for a while. Do not touch that chimney. You just blow down the top to put it out. This one has a lever. You could raise it up. You raise it up either lower or lighter to burn it out. But it also gets hot. And I guarantee you, being on Guam and burning that, it gets hot. You can use just about any cooking oil for uh, oil in these. You don't have to buy the lamp oil. Uh, but cooking oil, from my research, I have never used it, is olive oil. Not the virgin or extra virgin olive oil, but just plain olive oil. I've never used it, but from what I've read, it burns very clean and it burns uh, bright, uh, bright white light. I have quite a few of uh, these type lanterns. She, I've got the ones that were my wife's grandparents on both sides of her family. So I've probably got eight or 10 of these glass ones that are antique, but they work very good at giving you light after dark. I've also purchased and have on the shelf quite a bit of this paraffin. This is the ultra pure paraffin Wow, oil for burning in these lamps. Supposedly smokeless, sootless, and odorless. But I guarantee you, you turn up that wick to get a uh, brighter flame, you're going to start getting smoke. I don't care what you're using. And another thing you really need to have is extra wicks. This, they come in different sizes. This is one that's a variety pack. It has several different thicknesses of wicks in it. And one other point, a uh, tip I saw years ago from another Prepper channel, it's a weird thought, but if you have Q-tips, uh, the paper kind, don't get the plastic, and Vaseline, you can make miniature torches. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the method of having light after dark that most people have not thought of, doesn't involve fire, could be used underwater if necessary, I know you've probably seen them in movies, but you uh, really don't think about it. And that is these, what do they call them? Safety light sticks. Fairly small, portable, fit in your backpack, go bags. But these are, they have two chemicals in them. And if you snap them, it breaks a little glass cylinder inside, mix, shake it, mixes the two chemicals, and they glow. These said they last for 12 hours. I doubt if at the end of 12 hours it's near as bright as it was at the beginning, but don't require any batteries, don't require any fire, safe, uh, not overly cheap, but not real expensive either, non-toxic, so safe around kids. I know you've been to festivals where you see those glow stick things, uh, necklaces that the uh, vendors there sell to their kids, your kids. Anyway, there's your last method. And I think with these glowing, I would use these more for probably uh, a nightlight kind of thing. If I'm going to bed, but I want to be able to see if I'm awakened in the middle of the night or I have to get up and go to the bathroom without stubbing my toe, crack one of these, hang it up, set it on the nightstand, you can carry it with you, whatever. But I would probably use them more for that type feature. 
One other thing I'd like to add is when I was doing a little bit of research for this, just looking up things, I found a site that shows how you can do a homemade uh, oil lamp. All you need is a metal coat hanger, if you can still find one of those around, a wick, which, uh, yes, you will need some extra wick that you have for your lamps anyway, a canning jar, as they are built to take higher heat, and a pair of needle nose pliers. I will put a picture up here of the lamp and uh, perhaps directions to the website, but you could just build very cheaply and in an emergency situation, have an oil burning lamp. In conclusion, I'd just like to say I hope you found this video informative. If you did, please uh, click the subscribe and the like thumbs up button. And remember to always hope for the best, but plan for the worst. Thank you for watching.